Hello, I'm Joe Hamaker. And in this presentation, I'll be discussing using bathtub curves for estimating the cost impacts of schedule compression and extension. First, a little bit about me. I'm the director of DOD and NASA programs at Gallaudet Federal. Formerly, I directed cost at NASA, and I have over 40 years of experience with cost estimating and analysis. My email address is at the bottom of the chart, jhamaker at gallerath.com. First, a little introduction and background. Theoretically, all project schedules have some optimum duration. So if the schedule is compressed from that optimum, there should, there, from that optimum, there should be a penalty. And that penalty would go to pay for overtime, multiple shifting, to pay vendors premiums for uh, delivering hardware and software early, that sort of thing. If the schedule is expanded from the optimum, there should also be a penalty. And that would be to pay for the additional fixed cost of a stretched schedule. Now, sometimes as cost analysts, we need to be able to predict these penalties. And maybe we don't have time or the resources to adjust the resource loaded integrated master schedule, which would be one approach to do this. We need a quicker way. And so one quick way that's been used is in the past is, is bathtub curves. So this presentation will offer two bathtub curves from the literature. And I had both of these curves in graphical form. So I broke out my 1967 T square and right triangle and took off the data points manually. Then I used a polynomial fit to generate an equation for the resulting data uh, that, would be, that would correspond to the bathtub curves. And of course, those polynomial equations could then be embedded in an automated cost model. So the first bathtub I had is the one on the left, and now you can see why they're called bathtub curves. They're shaped like a bathtub. The first one is from the NAFCOM model, which is a NASA Air Force cost model. Now that's been replaced by PCEC. NASA Marshall developed both of these models, but the latest one, latest version is PCEC, the Parametric Cost Estimating Capability Model. But the old NAFCOM model had the bathtub curve on the left, which I had a graphical copy of. There's a recent book by Christian Smart, the <clears throat> Gallarath uh, chief scientist, called Solving for Project Risk Management. And it also refers to a bathtub curve. That's the one shown in the above right, above right chart. It's the same, con, uh, same concept as a NAFCOM curve, just different data. So I took the uh, two curves and used my T-square and right triangle to grid off the two plots, which allowed me to read off the approximate XY data points that correspond to these two curves. And those data points are shown in the table on the right-hand side of the chart. So first the NAFCOM, you can see X schedule percent change there for, and Y percent change in cost. So these, are, these numbers are in percentages. So for example, the first data point for NAFCOM is a minus 40% schedule, a 40% compression of schedule. And that bathtub curve on the left is predicting that you should have a cost penalty of about 68%. Same idea for the solving for project risk management uh, bathtub curve. Uh, at minus 50% schedule, that curve is predicting something around 158% cost penalty. So that's the data that I'm going to introduce into a polynomial curve fit. I first tried a quadratic poly polynomial on the top left, and uh, that's a polynomial that has x and x squared as, as, its, as its terms. And you can see that's not a very good fit. You can see that visually, and you can also see the r squared of 67% uh, is, is not all that great. So I increased it to a, a cubic, uh, added the x cubed term, and that gives us a fairly good fit with, with an r squared 94%, and you can see that it fits the data points fairly well. You also may notice there's a second inflection point in that uh, curve on the far right-hand side. So that's not desirable, but that's what you get with an X cubed term and with a cubic polynomial, you're gonna get, that, you're gonna get two inflection points. So that's, that's an issue, but observe that it's out there at about 100% schedule growth. So as long as you're not doubling the schedule, uh, the polynomial is behaving. It's not predicting lower costs for, for an elongated schedule, which wouldn't, would not make sense. There's another problem though, and that's at the 0% schedule change. Now, 0% schedule change, you're theoretically at the optimum schedule, the, the bucket and the curve. And you, you would like your model here to predict no cost impact, but we're getting a, a small cost impact. It's not, we're not getting a Y equals zero at X equals zero. So we're gonna have to worry about that in a moment. Let's take a look at doing the same thing using the curve from the project risk uh, book. Again, I tried a quadratic polynomial, 
get a little bit better results than we saw from the NAFCON data. We're getting an R squared of 87%. You can see that the, that's the data a little bit better visually, but I think we can do better with the cubic polynomial top right. So, and in fact, it's giving us an R squared of 99%. And you can see visually that it's uh, pretty close to all the red data points. Once again, though, we see a second bend in the curve just beginning out there at a scheduled expansion of near 100%. But once more, as long as you don't go out in that territory, uh, the uh, model probably is uh, doing pretty well. Uh, there's that same problem of a, a, a 0% uh, schedule change yielding uh, uh, something not uh, y equals not zero. So that's, that's a problem we need to address. <clears throat> so let's exercise the polynomials with, uh, and see what we get. So I've exercised the polynomial from NAFCOM on the left-hand side of this table and the one from the Solving for Project Risk Management book on the right-hand side. And at, so again, at minus 50% uh, schedule uh, compression, we're now getting 93% from the NAFCOM equaction because uh, it's, it's not fitting the data perfectly. So it's, it's close to the 88% we saw before. And on the right-hand side of the table, we're seeing the, the same uh, equation prediction uh, or the equation prediction for the polynomial that's coming out of the fit for the data from the Solving for Project Risk Management book. We're getting 163% schedule uh, cost impact at for a 50% schedule compression. So you can see down when we come down to zero, uh, as we observe from the plots, we're not getting a zero cost impact. So at 0% schedule change, we'd like that uh, NAFCOM curve to give us a 0% cost impact, but it's giving us that pesky 5%. Same thing for the uh, solving for project, project risk management curve. It's giving us a 10 or 11% cost adjustment at even at optimum schedule. So if you study those equations for a moment, you'll see what's really going on here is just the constant term coming into play. So in the left-hand equation for NAFCOM, we have a constant term of 4.981. Well, that's what's giving us that 5% upper there because if X equals zero, the rest of the equation is zeroing out, right? So all we're left with is, is with that constant term. Same thing for the polynomial on the right it has a constant term as 10.7. So we're getting a 10.7 when we go to x equals zero out of that equation too. So the pro problem, our problem is being introduced by the constants in each equation. So therefore to force the two equations to yield y equals zero at x equals zero, we just zero out the constants. And I'll show you that on this chart. So the top part of this chart is the same data you saw just a moment ago on the previous chart. And on the bottom, you see that I've crudely painted over that constant term in both equations. And then in the Excel spreadsheet that I use to do this work, I've entered the polynomial without the constant. So that brings <clears throat> the both curves down. It brings the left-hand curve, NAFCOM curve down by 5%. And it brings the uh, solving for project risk management curve down by about 11%. So removing the constant terms forces Y equals zero at X equals zero, so that we're predicting a 0% cost penalty at a 0% schedule change. Now, I'll admit that this would cause our polynomial to run under the data points just a bit, but I think that's worthwhile. We have to have that for, for logical consistency here. We can't have a, 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 a relationship that's predicting a cost impact at the optimum schedule. So giving up a little bit of accuracy to make it uh, uh, make sense. So this presentation has offered two formulas which can be used to predict the cost impacts of op optimum schedules. Um, painted those in here again, or, or pasted those in here again for you. Uh, both the one from NAFCOM and the one for the so, from the Solving for Project Risk Management book. Now remember, don't try to use these formulas beyond uh, a double schedule because of, each of them have a second inflection point because of the cubic polynomials. So that, uh, that's uh, beyond the uh, uh, range of applicability for these two formulas. Now, of course, a more practical approach here probably would have been to use two curve linear equations instead of one polynomial. We could have used a curve linear uh, expression for the left-hand side of the bathtub curves, the one that addresses schedule compression. And then we could have fit another curve linear uh, uh, curve to the right-hand side of the bathtub curve to model schedule expansion. And that would have avoided the second inflection point issue, maybe even given, given a better R squared. But hey, what's the fun in that when you have an excuse to use polynomials, right? There remains a, another practical problem, and that's knowing how off-nominal any schedule may be. So 
A solution to that I offer to you is the Galarith SEER H model and SEER SIM model, that's for hardware and software respectively. They not only estimate costs, but they also predict schedule. They predict an in-family schedule duration for projects, and that's based on the knowledge bases of these models and whatever complexity settings you've made to estimate the costs. So both of these models give you a schedule estimate, presumably optimum schedule estimate. So that's one way to know if your schedule is either compressed or stretched, and then it would let you use these uh, polynomials here to make a cost adjustment for that. So a final word, uh, Gallarath is a 75 person company dedicated to providing our customers with best practice cost analysis. I've listed some of our skill sets there. I'll let you scan that list for yourself. If you'd like to know more about Gallarath, uh, the website address is at the bottom of the chart. And once again, my email address is listed at the bottom of the chart, jhammaker at gallarath.com. Okay, thank you very much.